Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well today we're going to do a short segment on just this little section of the amplifier. And I know you've seen me doing these push button switch wiring and wiring up the LED bridge rectifier and all that stuff, but I don't think I've ever showed y'all how I install this little capacitor. And I used to wire these up direct wiring to the terminals on the switch itself, soldering onto them, and then, you know, put heat shrink tubing over it or something. So I've changed to using the little pigtail that comes with it so you can unplug it and replace the switch. And I'm going to show you how to install the little snubber capacitor across the switch that makes it quiet when you turn the amp off. So let's get busy. Okay, I decided to do this as like a little standalone video because this will work for any amplifier that you build using one of these little push on, push off, angel eye power switches. And I personally have been using these that have the 12 volt DC LED and I make up a little bridge rectifier with a filter cap and then use a dropping resistor to get the illumination levels that I like. Usually a 3.3K works really well. And you know, about a 330 UF cap doesn't need to be over 16 volts. You know, you can go ahead and go 25 volts if you want. It's running off the 6.3 volt AC heater and then bridge rectifying that. And it seems to be a nice illumination level. But you can use the type that have the 120 or, you know, line voltage illumination if you want to do that. I just, I think it makes the LEDs last longer if they have nice filtered DC going to them instead of running them off AC. So, anyway, I'll show you how to do that when I'm working on the amp, but for now, I wanna show you how to wire up the little switch. So one of the key things is using one of these kind of caps across the switch, and that'll keep it from popping when you turn the amp off. And I've tried different sizes of these caps, and this larger one seems to work like every time. I've tried some slightly smaller ones, and you know, it still would pop every once in a while, Never had it pop using this larger one. So this is what I'm using now on all of them. And it's one of those safety caps that's designed to be put across line voltage like this. So we get this little guy like this. And you can see how the leads are kind of offset from each other in different directions. And so what I usually do is come in and like bend that one over. And straighten that one up. So they're offset in the same direction. Just like that. You can see what I did there. Okay, so you can put these anywhere in the switch. If you wanted to, you could put them back here, you know, where the wires are spliced together, if it's a little easier. But what I've been doing is putting them in this connector. And so you get a little screwdriver and you come in here and see that little hole right there? You stick a screwdriver in there and you'll feel it kind of pop up and then that just pulls right out. And then you do the same thing on this other side. You just stick the screwdriver in there and you bend that little tab up a little bit and that pulls right out. And then what you want to do is come back in here and then bend that little tab up so that it, it will engage when you push it back through the hole. And you want to do that on both these guys. And so the next thing you want to do, and you really need one of these little stands like this, you know, one of these guys, to hold this while you solder it. And so Come in like this. You know what, it might be easier to see this getting rid of this white towel. Let's just do this on the dark wood. There we go, that's much better. So, next thing you wanna do is come in with a nice clean tip 
and put a little bit of blob of solder on each one of these little leads like that okay and then you put a little bit of solder right on the edge of that just like that and then finally we're going to come in and you want to solder this on the edge of the terminal and you want to make sure you don't have any globs of solder on there and then the same thing over on this side we're going to put a little solder right there and then I'm telling you trying to do this without one of these little stand things is it's going to be impossible but you need to make sure that you keep the solder just right on that edge let me see if I can zoom in here and show you what this looks like like that and I may need to clean up that solder just a little bit to get it to fit in back in the holder but I'm going to see if it'll slide in there and then if I've done this right these should just slide right back in to this little terminal here. And then once you get it all done, it looks like that. And then we have our safety cap that will stop the switch from popping put onto this little terminal that then just plugs into here and I used to direct solder these to the switch but I decided to start using these little pigtails so that in the future if the switch ever goes bad or the light quits working you can just plug it in and we have our cap right there so there we go that's how you do that and again, it's kind of a little fight sometimes to get these to go back in. You might have to stretch the plastic just a little bit around here. And you might have to get a little file and clean off a little bit of the solder. Once you've got this, you know, soldered on good, you know it's not going to come off. Again, you might get a little file and clean off the solder so it'll slide in there. But I think that's a nice thing. And you can see there's not even any of that terminal or the lead exposed and it's all nice and safe. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed this. And that's how you put a cap on a switch. Well, as you can see, that was fairly easy. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to do this. And the main thing is you need to have one of these little third-hand tools, which aren't very expensive. And then I'll put one in the link below. But, yeah, just pre-soldering or pre-tinning the parts. And then soldering on using you know, a small amount of solder. And don't feel bad if you have to come back in with a file and kind of trim up the sides of those little solder points so it'll slide into these little receiver holes in this jack. So I have to do it myself sometimes and I've soldered a zillion joints. So yeah, don't be ashamed of that. Just get your little file out and trim it down until it fits in place. And I think it ends up with a really neat installation of this cap that makes it look like it was made there. So anyway, if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks to you regular viewers and Patreon supporters, other people that support the channel in other ways. And until the next video, have a nice day.